turns out I've been doing coffee wrong my whole life. But now I live in Italy and things are changing. So if we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Katie. I moved to Puglia about four months ago. And since I moved into this rental apartment, hold on just a sec. better, slowly but surely making it our own. Where was I? I was looking for a way to make coffee. No coffee machine, no French press, no drip contraption. But there was one of these. And I do have the perfect on-theme t-shirt for this video, but I thought it would be a little extra, so. And not just one, but three of them. Connor doesn't drink coffee. How do you feel about uh, coffee? So it really is up to me to hold down the coffee situation in this household. Okay, ti va prendere un caffè insieme? But first, we should go over some coffee rules. Yes, coffee rules. First, when you get coffee from a bar, and yes, it's called a bar, but it's not like the bar that we think of in America where you go to get your dollar pitchers and hot wings. It's a pretty quick standing endeavor, especially if you're solo. You'll go to the bar and get your caffè, or macchiato, or cappuccino, and maybe a small bite, and you'll wash it all down, and peace out. This one time I went to a bar, and the dude next to me, which you can kind of see in this video, but kind of can't, he got an espresso and a piece of chocolate cake, which here in Italy is a fairly normal breakfast food. I've talked to you before about how Italians love a sweet breakfast. So anyway, this guy at the bar, he came in after me, finished his cafe and chocolate cake and peaced out before I even was halfway through my brioche because that's just how they do it here. Although meeting a friend for coffee is a common occurrence and that's a more chilled situation, but let's not talk about it right now. Let's not talk about meeting up with friends and going to get coffee with them because we just entered new COVID restrictions. Zona Rosa uh, means no coffee with friends. So let's move on. I want to introduce you guys to Alice Oppure Alice. She has a YouTube channel, Italiano in Tasca. Piacere! Piacere di conoscere. Uh, sì. And I caught up with her to talk about coffee culture in Italy. Caffè è una cosa importante qua, no? Fondamentale. <laughs> Fondamentale. Perché? Okay, so if you live in Italy, then you drink espresso. Prendi sempre l'espresso. Espresso, it's the pick-up coffee, you know, I'm tired, I need something to pick me up. Espresso is always the answer for an Italian person. <laughs> <laughs> so as I continue this video, I'll bring her two cents in so, you know, you get the input from a vera italiana. And when we're talking about coffee in Italy, there's maybe just one thing you really have to remember. No cappuccinos after noon. No. <laughs> you can't have cappuccino after lunch, okay? Yeah. That, that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course, in the privacy of your own home, which is where we all are while we are patiently waiting for COVID to go away, do whatever you want to do. Put coffee in your coffee. Put coffee in your coffee. Put milk in your coffee. I won't tell. But when you are home, you're going to want the best coffee to make your coffee with, right? And here's another tip from Alice. This place is called Torrefazione which is the building where coffee powder is made, which are not like big brands that you can find in supermarkets and everything. They are more local. And the coffee there, I think it's the best. If you want to come to Italy and try coffee, definitely do in local bars. But if you want to bring home a pack of coffee powder, then find the Torrefazione. To make your coffee in Italy and how I make mine is with this piece of equipment, a mocha. I've always seen it spelled mocha with a K, but my Italian teacher spelled it mocha with a C. And I was like, why'd you do that? He was like, non c'è capa in italiano. K is not a letter, it's not an, a, a native letter to the Italian language. In English, we'd call this a percolator. Question for all of my Italian viewers, is Bialetti really the best? Like, does it matter? I'm very curious. Non esitate a lasciare un commento qui sotto. So let's make some coffee, shall we? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Could you tie your bites to... And here's how it works. Disassemble the machine. Fill the bottom with water up to the point of where this knob is. 
Put the middle piece in and add your finely ground coffee beans to that. You want to fill it up for the most part, but what you definitely don't want to do is really pack it in like a cup of brown sugar or something. You know, I have heard different theories on this. Some of my Italian friends say to just put the top on like this. Others say to really gently make it even. So do what you will. So you want to put it over low heat. And this is how the contraption works. When the water heats up, it generates steam and that increases the pressure and it pushes the water up through the coffee granules in that middle part and into the top chamber. You'll know it's ready when you hear this kind of bubbling, boiling, and then you'll turn off the heat and let it rest for just a moment before you pour it. Then you can pour it into a cute little cup or a mug, add milk or sugar or neither, and enjoy. On the topic of milk. Che tipo di latte preferisci nel caffè? Allora, mh, io sono un po' intollerante al latte di ah, mucca, okay. quindi preferisco mettere latte di soia, latte uh -huh. di mandorla, okay. like a substitute. Ok, è, bu è buono sapere che è una cosa qua in Italia. Okay. Molti anni fa uh, era molto difficile trovare alternative al uh -huh. latte normale. Adesso uh, è molto molto più semplice anche perché ci sono più persone vegetariane, più persone vegane. It's way easier to find even in the supermarket. The coffee you'll make from a mocha pot is stronger both in flavor and caffeine content than your average cup of joe in America, but not quite as strong as what you would get using an espresso machine. But yeah, this is, you know, got great texture and no i'm just kidding i don't know i don't know how to talk about coffee in terms of the nuances right actually that's an italian word i just learned sfumatura i can't really talk about it to that extent yet so i still have a ways to go in terms of being an italian coffee expert but i'm getting there and enjoying Io vi ringrazio, non dimenticatevi di iscrivervi al mio canale. Ciao a tutti, ciao! Oh, and don't forget to keep it quirky, sempre. Also, thank you so much to my Patreon community, the Quirky Club, thank you. You guys keep it quirky with the best of them. If you guys wanna join the Quirky Club, you get monthly recipes, you get live chats, and a bunch more stuff, including behind the scenes footage. Roll it! I decided to share something with you guys in this video that is something I cooked that went horribly wrong and then so right, so right. And really just goes to show how a kitchen mistake can be a kitchen delight. I decided to make a chocolate cake because when is that ever a bad idea? And I found this recipe by Dory Greenspan. This was called Chocolate Chocolate Birthday Cake and it's on the New York Times cooking recipe box. I'm so excited about this. The batter is so nice, it's perfect, it's silky, it's rich, it's amazing. And then it's time to pop it in the oven and the, surely thereafter is when things go awry. Okay, so what happened? Okay, so the deal is, you know, still getting used to this kitchen. The cake came out beautifully and I really wish I would have shot it as soon as it came out of the oven. I baked it in this, came out beautifully. And then I let it cool for about five minutes until I could touch this and then I flipped it over. It came out beautifully. I was like feeling so happy with myself. In this kitchen, I don't have a cooling rack. Uh, and then I was, oh my God, I'm such a mess. I can't even, okay. So I put it on these and you know what? It's really delicious. It's a really good cake. This is not going to go to waste. Mark my words. Do you remember cake balls? I've got some crema al mascarpone that needs using. The cake, break the cake up into even smaller bits. Mix it with the crema al mascarpone. I made it for a recent video when I was talking about panettone and pandoro. I think I have the perfect way to use it.
Time for a cake ball. Time for a cake ball. Get the whole thing in my mouth. I mean, you do you. These are pretty big. I'm probably going to bite mine in half. really good. Oh my god, are you gonna gag? Oh my gosh. So just remember, whenever you mess up in the kitchen, think cake balls. Thanks again for being a part of this Patreon community. I'll see y'all real soon.